Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to make a rudimentary movement system for AI characters um, using the built-in navigation of the UE4 engine. Uh, to begin, first thing you have to do, first thing you have to keep in mind every time you're using built-in navigation is you need a nav mesh volume. So we'll search for nav mesh bounds volume, add it into our level, and scale it up so it covers everything, at least anywhere you want to be able to path to. Um, this green area shows where there's navigation data. If it doesn't show, just hit P on your keyboard and toggles the view of it. And as you can see, around any obstacles, it doesn't build any navigation, so your character won't just run into those things. It'll avoid them. All right, uh, to begin, let's start with making the roaming AI character. So I've got a AI character here. It's just a copy of the third person character template. Um, I'll add it into the, I'll add a few of them into the level. And we will open it up. So to begin, since we're doing roaming, we'll make a custom event. We'll call it roam. And for this one, we just want to move our character to a random point within a random radius, or a given radius, I should say. So we will say random point in reachable radius. You could also use navigatable radius. It's just slightly different the way it works. Uh, for the origin, we're going to use our uh, AI character's location. So we will get actor location. And for the radius, we'll just set that to say 500 for now. And now we need a way to actually move the character. So we will say AI move to. And we'll connect that up to our custom event. We'll connect our destination to our random location. And for the pawn, we have to specify we want to use this pawn, so we'll use self. Drag off, get reference to self. And since we want this to just keep on randomly moving to location to location to location in repeating fashion, we've got to make it a loop. I'm just going to create a small delay so we know that they reach the location. We can use that to check. And I'll just have them delay for half a second. And then we will we'll do the roam function again. So hit roam. And connect that up. And this will just loop this entire blueprint. We also need a way to kick off the roam event. So we'll just call that on begin play. And connect it up. Hit compile. And let's test it out. Hit play. We see our AI characters just moving to random locations. It's that simple. Now that's not very smart. I mean, they just go to random locations. Um, so let's go for something slightly more intricate and we'll do a patrolling pattern. It's the same basic thing. We're gonna use an AI move to. And we'll need a custom event which tells them to patrol. I need to do custom event, and we'll call that patrol. And the main difference here is we just need a way to give them the specific locations. Um, for this instance, I'm going to use target points, and we'll just patrol between target points. So we'll create a new variable, and we'll call it destinations. trouble spelling there, that's all right. And we'll make this of type target point. Obviously you could use, you know, just a vector if you wanted to. That'd be, you just have to specify the vector instead of a actor, or you could use actors for that matter. Uh, we're gonna make this an array so we can have multiple and we'll make it public. I mean, drag in our array and we'll get and we're also going to we want to cycle through, so we need to know which index we are and which one we want to go to. So we are going to need a second variable which will track the index. I'll just call it index for now. And we want that to be of type integer, and we want it to be a single variable. So we will take our destination, and we want to get 
copy. We want our specified index. And that's going to be our new destination. So we'll say target actor. And again, for pawn, we'll say self. And this time, on success or fail, um, we want to go and set our new destination. So we'll take our index and we will increment it. You can just search for the plus plus, and that's increment integer. This will just take our variable, add one, and then set it to the new value. So we'll do that. And from there, we just need to call our event again. And our patrol event. And we need to kick it off again. So we'll do the same thing we did there. And instead, we'll just add patrol. All right. Now, if we compile, go into our level and select one of these AI. You'll see under default, we'll have our destinations variable. And we can add as many destinations as we like. Um, so I'll just add in some target points. Add one there. We'll add another down here. And a third, let's say, on that side of the obstacles. So we'll select our character. We'll add three indexes to our array. And we'll set them target point one, target point two, target point three. And hit play. It moves to the first, to the second, to the third. And it's going back to the first. Or to zero, actually, because we didn't set that correctly. We never told it what to do once it got to the end of the list. So for that, we'll just add in a little check. We'll say if that, if our variable is greater than or equal to our, actually we'll just say greater than our last index. It's greater than last index. And we just need to specify what our array is for the index to be valid. And we'll just use a branch. Okay. So, if our variable is greater than our last index, that means we need to set it back to zero, so it'll loop. And so we'll just get our variable and say set. So if that's true, we'll set it to zero, which will restart it and loop the destinations. So now, if we compile, hit play again, it goes to the first destination, second, over to the third, and then back to the first, and back to the second. And as you can see, these other two here, we never set their destinations, so they're just trying to get to the point zero, 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 the origin of the world. All right. And for our last little movement pattern, let's do uh, let's do one that they chase the player. That seems pretty simple. So we'll do another custom event. Add custom event, and we'll call it chase. And again, we're just going to use the AI move to. For the pawn, we'll say self. It up and for the destination let's use the player character so we'll get player character and we'll connect that to the target actor on success or fail we'll call chase and on begin play we'll call chase as well Right, so now the AI characters should chase the player. We'll go move to the target destination, player character. Once they get there, or they fail to get there, they'll do it again, and we'll try to get there again. Hit compile, hit play, and they're all running at me like a bunch of zombies. And 
And since they can't jump, they have to run around. As you can see, it's all working right. Alrighty. But as you can see, this is kind of limited. We can only pick one thing at a time. So let's change that and make it so we can change it on the fly. Uh, first thing we're going to do is create a enumeration. So we'll go into blueprints, enumeration. And we'll call this uh, movement states. I guess patterns would be more descriptive, but states works. And for this, we're going to create one for each of the different movement types that we created. So we'll have one for roam. We will have one for patrol. And we'll have one for chase. Hit save. Now we go into our AI character. And instead of calling a specific thing on begin play, we're going to switch on enumeration, which will be our movement states. So we will switch on movement states. And from there, we can just do that. And let's make our selection here. This is how you set which one it'll use. I'll promote this to a variable. that down and we'll call it you know movement pattern and for each one of those we just gotta call our custom events so I'll take the chase bring that down same thing with patrol and roam connect roam to roam patrol to patrol and chase to chase now we can select it on a per instance basis once we make our variable public, hit compile. All right, so we'll take our first one where we set the destinations and we will make him a, a patroller. Uh, our second guy will make him a roamer, that's fine. And the third will make him a chaser. And let's hit play. So you have one guy roaming, one guy moving to random places and one guy chasing us. And you know, it's created a bunch more complex complexity. And you know, if you wanted, you could create a custom script where it changes based on you know, the de detection of the player. If the AI character sees the player, it'll start chasing them, chasing them, or you know, do it however you like. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something, and have a great day. Thanks.